Hello traders, in this video we are going to discuss Gamma 101, basic theory and practical usage. Now this is my interpretation based on our models uh, and this is our framework we use for zero DTE options trading. When we analyze the options market, the focus is on the perspective of the market makers, also known as dealers. Now dealers play a significant role by providing liquidity and facilitating trading in the options market. They can have a substantial impact on the underlying price and are crucial from a flows perspective. When a participant buys or sells an option, it is likely a dealer is on the other side of that trade. Now a dealer is not in the business of speculation. They profit on commissions and spreads. So they aim to maintain a directionally neutral position by establishing offsetting long and short positions. In other words, dealers must limit their exposure to delta. So if a trader buys or sells a, a call or a put, the dealer has the opposite position and will hedge that exposure by either buying or selling the underlying stock. Let's look at an example. Just a quick refresher on some definitions. Delta is the change in an option's price per one point move in the underlying, whereas gamma is the change in the option's delta per one point move in the underlying. Now let's proceed with our example. Let's say a participant buys a 30 delta put, right? So they are long a put. The dealer is then short the put. And in order to hedge this short put position, the dealer must sell 30 shares of the underlying to remain delta neutral, right? So the hedge impact is short selling. This is known as the delta hedge. Now, if the underlying declines and the 30 delta put becomes a 50 delta put, then the dealer must sell an additional 20 deltas. In other words, they have to short 20 more shares. So the lower the underlying dealer short, higher the underlying the dealer buys, right? This is known as the gamma hedge. So essentially, the dealer is committed to buying and selling a predictable amount of stock to keep their position delta neutral. That is the basic hedging dynamic, just looking at one position. However, dealers can have tens of thousands of positions with the goal of maintaining delta neutral on the entire book. From a practical perspective, it is important to understand the net hedging impact on the market as a whole. In order to generate this data, there are a few assumptions we have to make. Number one, all traded options are facilitated by delta hedgers. Number two, call options are sold by participants and bought by dealers. Reasoning is that participants are usually long equity, right? And they sell call options to generate yield. Number three, put options are bought by participants and sold by dealers. Reasoning is participants are usually long equity, right? And they buy puts to hedge downside risk. Number four, dealers hedge precisely to the options delta via the Black-Scholes pricing model. Now, there are some limitations here. Uh, the major being that participants don't only sell calls and buy puts. However, these activities do represent the most dominant flows in the market. Before we proceed, I'm going to go over some quick facts, some definitions. From a modeling perspective, calls have positive gamma, puts have negative gamma, with no theoretical upper limit. Absolute gamma is the total gamma and that is the sum of all call gamma plus the sum of all put gamma. Notional gamma is the net gamma exposure, and that is the sum of all call gamma less the sum of all put gamma. And this indicates whether there is a higher call gamma or put gamma. Positive gamma means there is more call gamma than put gamma, whereas negative gamma means there is more put gamma than call gamma. Zero gamma, also known as the flip, means that call gamma and put gamma are equal. Let's break down the impact of positive gamma. This environment is characterized by lower volatility, improved liquidity, and mean reversion price action. It's generally a more stable environment, and it is said that the bulls are in control. This is because there is a higher demand for calls compared to puts. In this environment, dealers are long gamma, and they hedge by buying weakness and selling strength. So let's look at this graph here. This represents an order book for a dealer. 
Now let's just say that this is, you know, this represents 50 deltas, right? Quite uniform here. If the market declines, dealers will be buyers via limit orders. If the market increases, dealers will be sellers via limit orders. So the very nature of the order type adds liquidity and the very function of the counter cyclical hedging lowers volatility and creates this mean reversion type price action. So if you just think about it, you can see how you would get these characteristics from this environment, right? And this is due to that hedging impact, uh, which is very dominant in the market. Now, the higher the positive gamma, the larger that long gamma exposure the dealer has. The market impact of negative gamma is the opposite of positive gamma, and it is generally characterized by higher volatility, reduced liquidity, and destabilizing price action. In this environment, it is said bears are in control, as there is a higher demand for puts compared to calls. In this environment, dealers are short gamma, and they hedge by selling weakness and buying strength. So if we look over to the graph on the right, this is the dealer order book. And we can see as the market declines, dealers have sell stops. So they're actually gonna be shorting the market as it falls, and they're gonna be buying the market as it rises. So the hedging impact is actually in line with the underlying price. Hence, you can see why it would lead to higher volatility and more destabilizing type price action. Now, in terms of the order type, generally it's market orders, although it could most certainly be a little bit more complex than that. Uh, but the point I wanna stress here is that negative gamma actually removes liquidity. This hedging impact removes liquidity from the market. Hence, when you're a negative gamma, you tend to see wider bid ask spreads, uh, and it's just a little bit more challenging to execute orders. Lower negative gamma means that the larger the short gamma exposure for dealers. This chart represents the total market gamma, which looks at the gamma for all options at all available strikes and is calculated on a notional basis. And again, this is from a dealer's perspective. So each day we can, we can see our dealers long gamma or our dealers short gamma and to what extent. And we can see that on the Y axis where the X axis just marks the day. So each bar represents a day. Just to illustrate the difference in terms of volatility from positive to negative gamma, we can see on the X axis here is the total gamma. So simply the chart we were just looking at compared to the SPX uh, close to close percentage change. And we can see the higher the positive gamma the lower volatility you see, whereas the higher the negative gamma, the more volatility and you know just the wider that distribution is uh, in terms of returns. We can further analyze the hedging impact on a per strike basis, aiming to quantify the amount of buying or selling at a specific price level. The most significant hedging impact is often observed at strikes with the highest gamma value when they are at the money. For instance, when the underlying asset reaches 4,600, dealers are expected to sell X amount of stock, which creates a resistance level. If the underlying asset price sells off to say 4,500, dealers are expected to buy X amount of stock, which creates a support level. So these hedging dynamics create distinct supply and demand zones, which we often use as our support and resistance levels. Now, what causes options deltas to change? Three things, changes in the underlying price, changes in implied volatility, and changes in time. This is known as gamma, vanna, and charm. So when the underlying price moves down, the 50 delta call here in the gray will become a 20 delta call. When implied volatility moves down, the 20 delta call becomes a five delta call. When time elapses, the five delta call becomes a zero delta call. Now, charm doesn't really have much of an impact, so I'm not gonna break it down here, uh, but we are gonna dive into Vanna uh, and explain this further and the market impact uh, associated with it. Vanna is uh, a little bit more complicated than Gamma, and this chart shows 16 different scenarios separated by a vol up, vol down, 
Um, now you can go ahead and study this, try to remember it, um, but the most common flows are short calls and long puts, meaning that dealers are usually long calls and short puts. So with this assumption, let's look at the practical aspect. Vanna is the sensitivity of an options delta to changes in the underlying assets volatility. So just as dealers have to make adjustments on changes in the underlying price, right, known as gamma, they must also do so when there is a change in implied volatility. When implied volatility goes up, the implied distribution widens, as you can see here. Now, the reason being is that all options have a higher probability of expiring in the money. A wider distribution means that changes in the underlying aren't as meaningful to delta. So less sensitivity of delta to underlying moves equates to less gamma. As you can see, the gamma drops. When IV goes up, that implied distribution narrows. As you can see here, reason being is all options have a lower probability of expiring in the money. A narrow distribution equates to more sensitivity of delta to underlying moves. And this equates to more gamma. As you can see, that gamma increases. The main takeaway is when an option is sold, it lowers implied volatility. When an option is bought, it raises implied volatility. Dealers sell when implied volatility rises, and dealers buy when implied volatility declines. So when we see large moves in implied volatility or the VIX, whether up or down, it tends to be an exacerbating factor. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, that is your introduction to Gamma, Vanna, and the hedging dynamics. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in learning more, visit our website at zerodtetraders.com. Thanks for watching.